Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for August 30th, 2022. Glad that you are with me today. Today is National Beach Day, Frankenstein Day, International Cabernet Sauvignon Day, International Whale Shark Day, National Grief Awareness Day, and National Harper Day. Go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. The Lord's unfailing love and mercy never cease, fresh as the morning and sure as the sunrise. Our reading for today is from Genesis chapter 14, verses 1 through, I think it's 14. Listen for God's word to speak to you. In the days of King Amraphel of Shinar, King Ariok of Eleazar, King Shedarlaomer of Elam, and King Tidal of Goyim, these kings made war with King Bera of Sodom, King Bersha of Gomorrah, King Shinav of Adma, King Shimabir of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zoar. All these joined forces in the valley of Sidim, that is the Dead Sea. Twelve years they had served Chitalamer, but in the thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year, Chedalmeir and the kings who were with him came and subdued the Rephaim in Astaroth Karnaim, the, the Zuzim in Ham, the Hemim, Emim in Shiva Karathaim, and the Horites in the hill country of Seir as far as El Paran in the edges of the wilderness. And then they turned back and came to En Meshpat, that is Kadesh, and subdued all the country of the Amalekites and also the Amorites who lived in Hazazon Tamar. Then the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adama, the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is Zewar, went out, and they joined battle in the va- valley of Sidim, with king Chedolomer of Elam, king Tidal of Goyim, king Amraphel of Shinar, and king Arioch of Eleazar, four kings against five. Now the valley of Sidim was full of binamin pits, and as the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, some fell into them, and the rest fled into the hill country. So the enemy took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all the provisions, and went their way. They also took Lot, the son of Abram's brother, who lived in Sodom, and his goods, and departed. We'll go ahead and stop there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, lots of names there. Lots of places that uh, don't seem very uh, familiar to us. Lots of sort of things going on. Sometimes uh, when I hear these sorts of things, I like to approach it like, um, I don't know, like Lord of the Ring, right? Um, Don't worry about the names. Don't worry about the places. Uh, there are some that you're going to be familiar with and some that you're not going to be familiar with. What is, what's going on here, right? What's the big picture? Well, there have been, there has been this sort of long-standing alliances between kings. These kings would have been um, sort of over a, a city. And in those days, a city was kind of its own sort of city-state type thing. It was its own sort of little fiefdom, little kingdom. Uh, not anything near what we would call a city now, but still, you know, a sizable uh, little, it has its own local economy and the things that it does. There's walls usually around these cities so they could protect themselves. They have to take care of their own folks, all of those sorts of things, right? There are a bunch of kings, five, that are, they have sort of ownership over these other smaller kings. King, little cities, kingdoms for, um, and they are expecting that these smaller kings, these smaller sort of cities, are going to pay to the larger cities so that they're not overcome, that the larger cities are going to sort of protect them. It's that sort of situation. It, it, it's a longstanding sort of um, mutual trade, mutual sort of protection, um, all of those sorts of things. So that's the idea, right? This would be very common in the ancient world, whether we recognize the cities or not. That's kind of what's going on. Well, 
the, the kingdoms, the little cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and a couple of others decide they're done with paying their sort of taxes to this larger confederation of kings, and they want to be their own independent people, their own independent cities. And so they stop paying their sort of taxation, their, their money to these other kings, and they are in now rebellion against them. They're going to stand on their own. This, again, was a very common thing that would happen throughout the ancient world. Um, eventually, there would be a city or a community or whatever who decides, you know what, we don't need to pay all these people way off there. We're, we're doing okay on our own. So they stop. So then, Chedolomir and these five kings, they come in and they just wipe out. They run through this whole land and they take over everything. They re sort of institute their reign. They, um, they're, there's very clear, decisive military campaign and they, it's not even close to um, sort of a, an equal footing. They absolutely positively win. And in fact, um, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they run away and they come into these cities and just take whatever they want. They, they take all of the riches. They take all of the, the livestock, whatever it is. And so they are now, they have succeeded. They have taken this sort of taxation that was owed to them as far as they are concerned. Um, and they have shown that they are more mighty than these other kingdoms. So that's the setup. As a sort of sidebar, we remember that Lot, uh, the nephew of Abram, who did choose to settle in this land because it was a nicer land. Uh, it seems that he has not just settled in the land, but he settled in this city specifically of Sodom. And he, along with his household, is taken by King Chedolomir and the rest of these five armies. And they are taken away. They're taken as uh, slaves, apparently. So that's the sort of setup for what is going to happen next. But I thought we would take a little bit of time here. There are larger sort of economic, national forces, all sorts of different things, historical forces, um, armies and kings and alliances and all of these sorts of things that are going on in this greater narrative, this greater story. That's not ultimately what Scripture is really interested in. It's interested in this relationship between God and this group of people. At this point, just this one family, Abram's family, Abram and Sarai. There are other things that are going on, and, and these people that we are getting to know, Lot and his family, are affected by these huge political sort of upheavals and all of these historical forces. Being part of the people of God doesn't sort of magically whisk them away from, from these forces. They are a part of it. They're, they're tied up in all of these, these different things that are going on in the world. God always operates in and through history. God always operates in and through relationships with people. Sometimes we can get a little bit twisted. Sometimes we can think that whole nations are um, sort of doing God's will. And sometimes they do. And oftentimes when they say that they are, they're not as well. We get caught up in forces that are much larger than ours. Our stories get caught up in the the larger stories of history, of nations, of wars. And yet God is always at work. God is always seeking relationship with us, calling us to be faithful in the time and the place that we are called to right now. I was talking earlier today with a gentleman who served during World War II and told me all about sort of the places that he went and all these things that he did. He's caught up in this grander narrative of nations 
and countries. But his story is a story of faithfulness. How he was committed, how, how God was watching over him during this time. All of our stories is this. So, those are our readings for today. Go ahead and join together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. We lift our voices in prayer and praise, holy God, for you have lifted us to new life in Jesus Christ, and your blessings come in generous measure. Especially we thank you for the good news of Jesus Christ for all. The wonder and beauty of creation. The love of family and friends. Opportunities for faithful service. Particular blessings of this day. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for your story that weaves in and through the stories of kingdoms and kings and nations, of alliances and wars. We thank you for your melody of peace and grace that runs through all of them. We hold up before you human needs, God of compassion, for you have come to us in Jesus Christ and share our life so that we may share his resurrection. Especially we pray for the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. Peace and justice in the world. Those in whom we see Christ's suffering. Those who offer Christ's compassion. Particular concerns of this day. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Ed, who is currently in CCU at East Jefferson with pneumonia, but is doing better and may be moved to a regular room. We pray for Sandy's daughter-in-law, Danielle, who has cancer and will have surgery soon. For Fran, a friend of Beverly's, whose cancer has returned to her kidneys, as well as her brother, who has stage 4 cancer. For Joseph. Lynn's grandfather, who's in the hospital, and for the Sens family, who's moving. For Nick, whose shoulder surgery has been scheduled, or his recovering from shoulder surgery. We pray for Keith, son-in-law of Dennis and Ernie in Nashville. For Van, family of the Garlands. For Tony, who is going through radiation treatment and all those who are on our hearts and our minds. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, be our starting point and our haven, and accompany us in this day's journey. Use our hands to do your creation, and use our lives to bring others the new life you give this world in Jesus Christ, Redeemer of all. Amen. Now let us join together in the prayer that Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen. Bless the Lord. 
The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA, 2018 edition, and our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time.